everyone. I'm Shaheen from The Content Mix, and I'm excited to be here with Mark de Brown, a marketing and customer experience expert based in the Netherlands. He's currently marketing manager for EMEA at Smartly.io and previously worked for large software firms, EY, SAP, and Workiva. He's author of Customers Are People Too, focused on the human side of customer experience as well. So thanks so much for joining us, Mark. Thanks so much for having me. Yeah, so can you just start out by telling us how you became an expert in marketing and customer experience and a bit about your background? Yeah, absolutely. I don't think I really planned to uh, to become a customer experience expert, but um, I actually started, uh, or actually before I started like working, I was, uh, 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 I was cycling a lot. And I think at the age of 18 or 19, I kind of had to make the decision to, like, do I continue cycling and become a professional cyclist or do I... Uh, uh, you start like a regular job and I obviously wasn't good enough to become a professional cyclist. So I started, started working in a bike shop. I think after about a year, I became the manager of a second bike shop that the owner opened. And I think that was kind of my foundation for uh, this kind of customer focus. I think that like owning a small business, I think is a really good foundation for, uh, for a marketer or a customer experience professional because you kind of have all of the, and the things happening in a small business that are also happening in a larger business. And yeah, from there, I started studying again and started at um, various companies and then indeed EY, SAP, Rukiva. Now, Smartly, yeah, I, I've always been a lot uh, involved with customer uh, discussions and, and, and um, meetings. And I think that's what I truly love. So I kind of rolled into it, I think, and just started sharing about customer experience and people liked it. So that's, I think, how it kind of grew. And so how does um, customer experience relate to what you do now at Smartly? Yeah, well, I think marketing is very closely connected to customer experience. Uh, it's maybe, yeah, the center team, I think, always when it comes to customer experience. Although the customer experience is, I think, you know, everyone is involved uh, with that. Uh, but yeah, we, we try to deliver like this amazing um, experience uh, at our events, for example, but also any kind of way that a customer or uh, or anyone really connects with our brand. I think it's important that we have like a really good customer experience for them. So, yeah. So can you tell us about your book, uh, Customers Are People Too, and kind of how that project came about and why you thought it was necessary to write this book? Yeah. Well, the book is really about like humanizing technology. And uh, I wrote the book during my time at SAP, at least most of it. And uh, so a lot of people were quite, quite um, interested why I was actually, you know, the, why I was actually choosing a topic that focuses, focuses a lot more on the human side and it's instead of like the technology side, because yeah, the aim of SAP is obviously to sell software. And, uh, but I, I really noticed like talking to customers that, um, most discussions are really quickly about technology and the more you think about it the more you will notice it like every business discussion will very very quickly turn into a technology discussion and and if you think about like in your day-to-day lives maybe maybe it's you but or, like any friend or family like there's always somebody who has this like super technology focus with maybe smart uh, uh, smart lighting or uh, smart um, speakers at home. Like you always want to have the latest technology. And the same thing, I think is really happening still for a lot of brands. They always want the latest technology. But it's, I think the, the kind of the, the red threat of the book is that it's much more important to focus on the human side of it. Why do you really need it? Uh, what's really the benefit for the customer? And then look at what kind of technology fits well there. And um and once that is, when, when you kind of have that picture clear and you then look for the kind of technology that you need to accomplish that, then you'll be much more successful. And that is that both for the brand as the kind of the software company, a much better, um, uh, yeah, a much better way uh, forward, I think. Could you um, tell us what you mean by the term customer experience? Because I think of it a little bit as the tech related term like it's user experience customer experience like the way someone interacts maybe with your app or your website um but it sounds like you consider it more than that so could you tell us a bit what what you think the term customer experience really yeah means? maybe it's more for me it's maybe more like the customer centricity of, of a company so it's not just like the experience in every channel but more also the mindset as a company and how transparent you are as a company and kind of how you build trust openness uh i i i've heard 
once somebody said that, it, that customer experience is a feeling. And I like that a lot. It's kind of a feeling that you have with the brand. You know, do you, you know, how do you, it's, it's, it's hard to explain. The feeling is super difficult to explain. And, but, but that's to me is really customer experience. Like, yeah, if you have a good customer experience, you, you feel like welcome to a brand or like you feel like you have a nice feeling with a brand. So that's maybe the best way to explain it. <laughs> and then <laughs> everything connected to that, everything that impacts that from like uh, employees to, yeah, maybe your social media to, uh, to email newsletters that you send out, like all the typical stuff, but like everything connected to that. Maybe it's more customer centricity, but I, I see that also as a customer experience. Yeah. Okay. That makes a lot of sense. Um, so it's every single thing in the company that, that a customer that impacts a customer. Um, yeah. okay. Um, so could you, uh, tell us more about uh, your role right now at, at smartly.io and kind of what, what your responsibilities are there? Yeah. So I, um, lead them, uh, like the marketing region, uh, here in EMEA, typical day. I think it, it Obviously changed a lot this year with, with COVID, but it's, and that's everything from like running events to the more strategic decisions. Uh, yeah, we have one, for example, we have one flagship event happening in January. So we're now very much focused on that, making sure that we deliver a great experience there, but also that we have like authentic content at the event. So it, it includes like a lot of things from, um, from simple things to very strategic things right now. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I mean, at, at the content mix, we're of course focused on the content marketing side of things. So I'm also curious on your perspective on how content plays into customer experience as well. I think that is really important. It's all about content. Um, I think I already mentioned, I think transparency, but I think with content, you can be transparent. You can kind of, you know, share your view as a company. You can share your thought leadership. I think that creates trust, right? So you can do that with content and yeah, it can be, can be, I think, yeah, I'm I'm very focused on B2B marketing, so it's, uh, content is also a lot of used for for demand generation. But also, uh, especially within our company, we also create a lot of content to kind of educate our customers or to kind of have a self service platform for customers for the more maybe easy questions. So I think that's also a way that content can help to provide a better customer experience. Well, you just joined Smartly uh, about a year ago, right? So, and at an interesting time, I mean, <laughs> what has been your approach to content and maybe how has that changed over the course of the year and in, in a very strange year where the context has changed as well? Yeah. Yeah. So, so first of all, we have, a, we have like a global content lead as well and, and creative people uh, who are doing, I think, the amazing job uh, when it comes to content like making it more authentic. And uh, if you look at our contents also, um, I think really creative, um, we have a high focus on making it unique and creative. But I think the um, the biggest change for us, and I think many companies has, has really been on the event part and the event content that we produce. We're quite a, a heavy event focused company and creating the content at those events. So not just the event itself, but also like the keynotes there, the sessions there, or, and kind of making those available and uh, now obviously to full virtual uh, approach um, and i remember at the beginning of the year we uh, basically turned our e entire event strategy into a um, completely virtual one big virtual event in just uh, eight weeks i think so from basically nothing to really large virtual event and i think that was really successful for us because we had about seven thousand people uh, joining virtually so we were i think really agile as a team to kind of move to this new um way of working with, with a lot more uh, digital focus yeah mm -hmm. so this event that you're doing in january is going to be totally virtual yes yeah, so it's kind of so that's that will be that kind of that same event for a second time and we're expecting ten thousand people now so we're hoping to grow a little bit yes <laughs> so any um well part particular anything you're doing differently this time or anything you've learned from the last virtual event that you're going to apply this time yeah okay well absolutely so i think the first time everyone it was we were really fast with things i think we were one of the first kind of companies in 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 the b2b software industry that kind of did this full virtual event like in the new in the new type of setup and i think for now for next year, we're, we're, we need to go next level. So I think there are so many virtual events. I mean, if you want to join a virtual event, you can join uh, probably 10 a day. 
So you really need to stand out. You need to do something really special. And um, I think making, having authentic content, when we talk about content, making it really authentic, you know, and just making sure that the whoever is speaking has kind of the ability to speak about whatever they want, but also from, from wherever they want and not too many guidelines on the content. Uh, I think that has been always, we always had great feedback on that. So the more authentic content is, kind of the more it will stand out and help people. And um, yeah, I guess it comes down to choosing the right people to speak as well, to really have something to say. Because if you let them say what they want, they have to have something to say now. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, yeah. It needs to be, uh, yeah, it needs to be, oh, and it's, uh, it needs to be, I think, really inspiring or very educational focus. And it needs to be like a good reason for people to watch it and uh, I think, think maybe another another to give you another example. I think the content online used to be very long for us, so maybe 20, 30 minutes, and and the attention span of a lot of people right now, especially at these events, is maybe more like ten minutes for a session. So we're also aiming to like make it more, look, have it like a faster pace during the event, and maybe doing things that people do not really expect at at these events. I think that's yeah, make that that that's what makes it unique. I think so. Uh, yeah, that's the focus. So what's your format? like on on the event like how long of an event is it and everything yeah uh it's a 15 it's going to be a 15 hour event it's a pretty long but it's a global event so we're starting in in EMEA and europe and then we'll hand over to the us and then we hand over to to apec so uh it's basically four to five hours per region full of content and then live pre-recorded uh content it's kind of a mix so, well, so it's um, like a big and, conference like people can pop in and out of like different parts of it and yeah, yeah absolutely yeah Okay, very cool. And actually, um, I for context, I don't think I asked you uh, to say more about like what Smartly actually does and who's your target audience. Right. Yeah. So yeah, we are a social advertising uh, automation platform. So we kind of combine the creative uh, part of social advertising with the ad buying part of the or the performance marketing part, and then kind of combining that into one platform. Um, so that means that we have a lot of, yeah, we, we mainly have like brands that are really focused on social, social advertising or the medium size or uh, especially larger size companies that, that obviously also have their like social advertising. So yeah, the more focus a company has on social advertising, the more interesting it is uh, likely to, to use our platform. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. So is, is social advertising like one of the channels that you use yourselves, I imagine? <laughs> Yeah, absolutely. Yes. Yeah. We need to practice what we preach. Yeah. So that, uh, but social in general, I think is important for us. Yeah. And still, I think because we, we run these, these events in a little bit of a different way that still, I think in B2B events are still very important. So it's events. It's, it's absolutely our social, social advertising. And we also have a pretty good uh, referral program. Yeah. Those are kind of our three main channels. Mm -hmm. And your your target audience is like leaders in digital marketing advertising area? Yeah, it's quite broad. So yeah, social advertising experts, but also creative experts uh, and, and really like more general marketing roles. Yeah, so still quite broad. Mm -hmm. Okay, cool. Um, definitely some overlap with the content mix community. So <laughs> that's cool. Good. <laughs> Could be relevant for them. Um, we'll definitely put links <laughs> in, in the article that we published with the, with the interview. Yeah. Well, how would you describe like your tone of voice in content marketing or um, across all of your marketing really? <laughs> yeah. yeah. So I, th I think, uh, I think we have a very casual way of, 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 um, of a tone of voice. I think we are the, the, the thought leader when it comes to social advertising. So we do want to create content that really has like an educational factor in it and like no nonsense, I would almost say. So we kind of remove the fluff and we just make, yeah, we, we just want to, to create content that really people are really going to use and not just so it has like a great title and people are just going to click on it and download it. But we really the aim is to create like really authentic content that people are really going to use. And then in a, I think, straightforward, casual way. So um, a bit with beautiful design, I think, connected to it. So that's um, that's kind of how I would uh, describe it. Do you have any examples of like types of content that have worked really well for you? Yeah, well, we publish like trends in social advertising uh, every year. So that always like trend, focus on trends works well, I think. I think maybe like content that is a little bit less obvious. 
we had, I think, yeah, we had event again. We had an event around um, where, where we did a museum tour actually in the Maritz House Museum. Um, and there is a painting called The Girl with a Pearl Earring, which is very famous. Uh, but we did like a, a masterclass tour there. And so we recorded a video on, on how kind of social advertising was used kind of in a way during the 17th century. Um, and they had like a beautiful story around that. And I think that's that's kind of the type of content that people really want to read because it stands out since it's new. It's like you don't really find that anywhere. So it's it's either really, I think the trends focused works well or like super unique content also works very well, I think. Mm -hmm. And I imagine like the trends article is something that's going like deeper, like a more in-depth article that's really like... You know. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Unveiling yeah, actually, insights. E yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the ebooks that we create are not like are usually not like uh, three pages. I I think are like like it's not like um, superficial. Um, yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's it's more like twenty pages average. I think we really want to bring something and then well designed so that it's also nice to read. Um, yeah, that's that's what we try to do. Um, and so you're responsible for the EMEA region. So I imagine you were working with teams in across all of all of these markets. Um, or yeah. actually, I don't know how how well you can tell me <laughs> how it works. Um, but yeah, I'm just curious how you adapt uh, adapt your campaigns for the different regions that you're working in. The different markets. Yeah, yeah. So we have we have a global lead for like content. We have like uh, also for for the creative part. And the way that it, that we like work, well, I think our audience use, is first of all very like uh, English focused, so we don't really have to translate things, mm -hmm. which I think is makes things easier. I know that a lot of companies they need to translate things, and that makes it already more difficult. Uh, but yeah, we try to at least use the content and then also uh, share it in the lo more local communities. So, for example, here in the Netherlands, that we kind of work together with a local community, and we maybe share a blog around a certain topic here that we then um, uh, so that we can kind of also share that content and we do the same thing in uh, multiple countries here in, in europe mm -hmm. okay so you're kind of working with the local sales team and using the global content but uh, adapting it a bit for to kind of speak to the yeah. local markets cool yeah exactly yeah uh, well so i guess switching gears a little bit i wanted to ask you like what what skills do you think are most important for marketers today? I think many. Um, <laughs> I think I think the, um, the the few skills that really I think help me at least are are be, I think really being data focused. A lot of people say data focused or uh, or something connected to that, but I really like I think like being data focused, uh, not just looking at the numbers, but maybe even going deeper than that, really understanding kind of the reasons behind numbers that is truly important i think as a marketer so um, and i think we especially b2b should not be afraid to become revenue focused so yeah closely working with sales but yeah instead of kind of making a hand over to sales maybe being a lot more revenue focused in the marketing team as well yeah when it comes to content i think it's really important for marketers to work on kind of the storytelling so Maybe not just writing. I think writing is a super important. If you, if you can write in a, in a in a good way, that will obviously help a lot. I think as a marketer, but if you can also then tell a story in a storytelling way, I think that helps a lot. And maybe finally, also being aware of technology because there's so much technology, and I noticed that a lot of at least CMOs they are they are very in, kind of they have this high level overview, but they you know, the, the technology. The, the, the development of technology is going so quickly that it is really important to kind of stay um, connected to that and understand what it does and what happens. And um, yeah, so kind of keeping up with technology is really important. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and these are obviously really diverse skills. <laughs> so um, so yeah, mar marketers are having to become super adaptable and be able to change between different types of tasks. I'm curious, how do you keep your uh, skills up to date? Yeah, and I do a lot of kind of just maybe self-learning. I think there is so much, there are so many different ways to kind of self-educate, right? So I watch, I actually watch a lot of YouTube videos, to be honest, just on certain topic and reading a lot of blogs uh, about, yeah, about developments. I speak a lot at events, so I also have kind of this, I just want to read new things and new developments. 
but also talk a lot with uh, colleagues on these type of things. So, so um, that's also a way to kind of get new ideas. And maybe even from other industries, like I have old colleagues that work in completely different industries uh, and just sharing ideas on how they do things and how that could maybe also work in there for a B2B technology company. Uh, yeah, I think what, but self-education, I think is an important one. Like it doesn't stop when you, when you, when you, when you kind of finish university, I can, I think, I think it then just starts. Yeah. Continuously. Um, yeah. Educate, I think is important. Do you have any tips for people, someone who just would be starting out right now, getting into marketing? Well, maybe the most, well, yeah, well, just like here in the Netherlands, for example, there's, um, there are quite a lot of blogs that you can read. Uh, which I do a lot, but maybe the most important thing for for if if you start as a marketer, I think is just talking to customers. Uh, I think not a lot of marketers do that, even though that they might say that they do. <laughs> but I think <laughs> I think like really speaking to customers, not just maybe about your product or the way that you as a company market to to the customer, but just in general, I think that helps a lot. I think so. Um, yeah, I would just, you know, if you don't do that already, I would actually advise everyone to like schedule some time with customers, just like have a meeting with them, just have like a casual conversation with them that it will probably give you more information and you'll probably learn more from that than, than any other uh, thing that you can do. So, yeah. Um, it actually kind of goes back to the topic of customer experience. And I was kind of curious, like what, I mean, since your, your career has been mainly in marketing, what like uh, made you interested in this more like holistic approach to, to customer experience? Yeah, that, that was more like after, after being involved in a lot of sales conversations um, with customers where, where I was, that kind of opened my eyes. Like there's like, there's, you know, Marketing is, I think marketers are maybe the CEOs of tomorrow's world, right? So because they have, they've like, uh, there's they have so many, so many different responsibilities and I think such a good overview of the company. And, and then when talking to all of these customers, I kind of also got like a lot of inspiration from that, like um, challenges that they saw. And, and I think marketing is then soon already a lot, broad, becomes a lot broader than I think just being, for example, very demand generation focused or very, product focused it's it's really more of a strategy of a company right so so it, it for me it kind of really quickly turned into like more of a customer experience um uh, few on things so that's that's um yeah that's kind of what happened yeah and i was also curious like why um you would work you've worked for some really large corporations in the past like why you decided to go to, to smartly.io which is you know more of a, a growth firm yeah, that's a that's a question I often get. And I think like the larger firms are awesome to work for. It's actually a great education as well. But there's just something I think about working for a more a kind of scale up type of company. Like we're now 400, close to 450 people. I think now, like it, there's something about it. Like the culture that 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 uh, at least we have is so amazing. It is really like such a pleasure to work for and like the colleagues and every team, like the cross collaboration between teams is amazing. And that is a completely different type of working. And I absolutely wanted to experience that. Like you, you own or are responsible for so many more things. And um, yeah, that's a, it's a different way of working. And I, um, I value that a lot. I mean, there's a lot of focus also on family and, um, um, yeah, I just find the, maybe the older I get, the more important I think that is. So I really love that. So yeah, I think also from like a, um, a growth perspective as a person, I think it's important to kind of experience both. And then, you know, later on, you can maybe make a better decision on what you really want. So, but um, yeah, I really like this growth culture and um, yeah, focus on uh, collaboration and things like that. Awesome. Cool. And I imagine like, uh, there's more like, yeah, like you said, collaboration cross working with other departments and a lot of opportunities for learning. Uh, well, I wanted to ask you about your, if you have any productivity hack you could share with us. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, 
well, things that I at, at least do and that work well for me is if, one, I, I wake up really early. I start the day really early. So for me, at least early between six and seven, that, that's maybe because uh, we have we have two small children. So I would be awake anyway. But I think like working in the morning is, uh, is great. I also try to not schedule any meetings in the morning. I just block my agenda and just try to have all my meetings in the afternoon um, so that you can really get things done. I think that's an important one. And maybe in marketing specific is 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 more to, or the, the the thing that I struggled a lot with in the past was that I always want I was always so excited about things, so I also always wanted to do so many different things, and I've become more of a do more with less type of person. So it's much better to just to focus on less things and do them really really well. Um, that kind of clears your head, and you get a lot more success from that. I think so. That's more of a Maybe more of a marketing advice, but um, I think that at least helped me a lot in my career to become more successful. So, yeah. yeah, I think it applies across the board for sure. Focus is key. Um, and then I wanted to ask about uh, any professional role model or a source of inspiration. Uh, yes. So, I, um, well, I get my inspiration a lot from anywhere, basically. So, from maybe even my own family to. Um, to anything that I can find online. Um, and uh, well, my role model is really more of a, I don't really have like a famous role model, but I do have like a uh, one of my previous managers who really not only taught me a lot on uh, in, in marketing or being like a marketing leader, but also I think becoming a better person um, and being more family focused and things like that. And I think even today, I kind of really benefit from that. So. Uh, yeah, he's really, I think, my um, my uh, role model. If I, uh, yeah, if I have to name one person, it would be him. <laughs> cool. <laughs> uh, was there like a particular lesson that you learned from that role model? <laughs> um, well, I have so many, so many. I think um, so. I think the family focus is one. So I always, uh, I always used to be quite family focused, but I think the like understanding that it's oh, that's totally okay that family is more important than work is a uh, is important when you are young, I think. So that, and also just to, for example, stay calm when when things uh, are maybe not going as planned. That it's totally fine to fail, and you know those. Yeah, I think creating a culture where it's you know where it's really okay to do all of those things, and where it's really transparent, and um, yeah, that is what makes work, I think, so much more enjoyable. So. Um, yeah, I kind of took that with me throughout my career now. So that openness, transparency, and having fun at work and always putting the family first, those are, um, yeah, it, it's not always like a given that you have that. So, um, yeah, I, I try to bring that with me everywhere that I, where I go. Yeah, super important and interesting to think about. <laughs> so, um, yeah, also I wanted to ask what's your favorite marketing or business book that you recommend it's it's funny because i uh, wrote like the, my my own book um but i don't really read that many books <laughs> <laughs> um, <laughs> that's maybe funny but i um uh, i do have a, a an interesting book marketing design from a dutch writer which is really a book about um uh well design uh, about, but also really about, uh, well, partly um, uh, neural marketing, and, and the author is called Eveline van Zeeland. Uh, I think that's a really, really interesting book to read. It's in Dutch, so this will only be for the Dutch viewers, maybe. But um, yeah, it's a really interesting book, I think, to read as a marketer. The importance of design, neural marketing, and that's more of the, um, um, yeah, and maybe a different view on how you can do things as a marketer. So I. Uh, I think that's a really good uh, book for inspiration. Very cool. Okay. And then um, what's your favorite software tool or app at the moment? Yeah. So I use uh, Spotify a lot. Obviously, music is an important part of my life. Um, and um, maybe a less more obvious one is an app called Be My Eyes. It is not like work related, uh, but this is a, an app that I I use it for many years now. It's an app that kind of connects blind people to people that are sighted. And I think that's, it's maybe even the perfect example about like humanizing technology. It's like, 
you yeah you just get like a, a notification and and then and then somebody gives you a call and you kind of help them with maybe looking at um maybe they're traveling so maybe they need some assistance in when is the train coming or or they need some assistance on when there's maybe a ex- uh, product in there um, at home that may be expiring. So they just want to know the exp- expiration date, or maybe they just want you to like read something, like s- these super simple things that really yeah help them, I think. And that's like great for them, obviously, but also uh, great for, for the person who is helping uh, because, yeah, it's really meaningful, I think. And yeah, so when it comes to an app or technology, I think that's, like I wish we had a lot more like solutions like that because that that really has a purpose I think so um yeah that would be my so it, it kind of and, enables like an easy way to give back and volunteer to to help someone yeah it's super easy yeah it doesn't like doesn't cost any time really and uh, it means a lot for the people who need the help so um yeah I would recommend to download it. it's it's uh, it's really a great way to interact with people so yeah, yeah that's really cool well, so I, last thing, just wanted to ask if you have any other uh, recommendations on resources for marketers, whether that's an industry group and an online community or a publication, podcast, anything like that. Yeah, well, I um, well, if you're interested in social advertising, well, then uh, then obviously everyone should join our Sofa Summit event. Um, uh, I also like to read quite uh, uh, quite a bit on the next web, um, which I think is a really nice platform for more technology and. Um, marketing related stuff and there's a typical Dutch website called Frank Watching um, uh, which I think everyone in the Netherlands at least will recognize and there's just a lot of uh, a lot of different types of content on marketing in the broadest sense I think and that is a really I think good source of inspiration um, to have I think every country kind of has that one uh, platform where there's a lot of inspiration so um, yeah, for the Netherlands, I think that's absolutely frank watching, for me at least. Okay, very cool. Definitely check it out. Um, so we're reaching the end of the interview, but just wanted to give you the chance to share any parting advice or uh, final takeaways for other marketers in Europe. Uh, yeah, well, the one thing that, that I think is most important as marketers is that we just keep it human, right? Customers are people too. And, and um, whatever decision you make, whatever, like if you create a campaign or if you create a piece of content, I think if you keep that in mind, like that you were talking to people, right? Uh, and not uh, like not uh, customers, like customers are also people. So if we keep it human, I think, um, yeah, that will absolutely make, deci- make, make decisions easier. Mm-hmm. Yeah, absolutely. So that's a, a great point to end on. Uh, thank you so much, Mark, for sharing your insights with us today. <laughs> Thanks for having me. Thanks, everybody, for listening in. For more perspectives on the content marketing industry in Europe, check out veracontent.com slash mix. And keep tuning in to the podcast for interviews with content experts. See you next time. Bye.